appreciate you guys taking the time, as always. It's always better seeing you guys after a win. You guys just smile a little bit more, which is always good to see. But uh, and all joking aside, I appreciate you guys taking the time. It was you know, so, so proud of our guys and how they battled in the second half. Um, you know, especially defensively, you know, really having two two-minute drills there at the end of the game, especially when we have not played those well. Um, being able to win both of those just for our guys, especially the week of practice they had, the things that we've been working to grow in and improve on, seeing them capitalize the, the interception, then going, you know, four straight downs where we um, end the game on defense the way we wanted to. Just proud of our guys. I mean, I'll never forget, I'm in the box. The fourth down play happens. We tackle the quarterback, and I look out across Table Rock, and I see you know, the cross lit up over there. And I literally am just like, thank you, Jesus. Like, we just just so proud of our guys and uh, the work we put in. Obviously, there's a lot of things in the first half that we got to clean up. We got to tackling is, a, is another thing that showed up a little bit, was just inconsistent to start the game. We had you know, the quarterback dead to rights a couple times, just missed. We've got to be better. Got to continue to work in practice, continue to put our guys in those spots. And then a couple third and longs, especially on the same drive, hurt us. And we, we have to execute those. It's, it's the situation we want to be in. We got to be able to execute those. So those are just a couple quick thoughts before uh, you guys jump at it. Explain the, the turnaround in the second half. I mean, at halftime, there's fans calling for coaches' jobs and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it wasn't going great. I mean, to just no, have no. that kind of turnaround at halftime and just dominate the way you guys did, I mean, how yeah. do you explain that? I mean, first off, hats off to our guys. You know, I mean, coaching staff did a good job just going in the second half. Okay, what, how are we being attacked? They had a bye week. We knew going in we were going to see, we were going to get some stuff that we had not seen. You have a bye week. That's always kind of what's coming for you. Um, I think we did a really good job as a staff just figuring out, okay, what are we playing well? What, what do we got to stick to? What are, what are going to be some switch-ups we can do schematically? But first and foremost, it's our players. I mean, going and talking to them, we meet as a staff, and then going to talk to our guys. They didn't bat an eye. Um, it was huge, our offense, getting that score right before half to cut it to, I think it was 27-14. Um, and knowing, especially for us too, like we're up first, boys. Like we don't, we don't have, we're not going to go out there and wait to see what our offense does. Like we're up first. We need to get this stop. Like the, the game's on the line here with this stop. And then once we get that, then we're going to be up again. And so it's just at that point when you're down by that much, which is the hole we, we put ourselves in, um, that's all you got. Every, every series, every down is crucial. But just proud of our guys. And, um, you know, a couple different little switch-ups we made at halftime that um, how, they, how we were being attacked by them. They did a great job offensively. They always have. Um, but really hats off to our guys, BJ, and just not blinking. Um, not bad and I even in the second half it wasn't like it was all perfect We still gave up another third and long late in the third quarter that we needed um, But then came right back again and and held them, you know three straight plays to get a punt had a fourth down stop so Wasn't perfect, but our guys found a way to rally and um, proud of our staff kind of just making the changes We needed to the second half and we went out we tackled better in the second half We covered better in the second half. So the fundamentals and techniques we got to start fast We got to do those from Jump Street um, but it was just proud of how our guys responded and being able to once again, show them now, like, and it's not just blowing smoke at you guys. We had a great week of practice last week, especially after the loss to Memphis. Guys came out and practiced their tails off. Then our, you know, talking to our guys yesterday was like, guys, it, it works. It works. If you, if you practice a certain way, you will play that way. In two-minute drill last, last week, we played really well in two minutes. And what happened in the game? It went well for us. So just continuing for a young group, um, them having to just continue to see how they do everything matters and how you practice is how you're going to play. And right now we're into game seven. The mistakes we've made throughout the season, we need to learn and grow from and not make them again. And then not put yourself in a situation where you're down 27 points to a, to a good team, um, which is all fixable by us. Like I said, fundamentals, techniques, tackling, things that we got to continue to rep and we got to be better at. You've been saying all season, you know, the defense is almost there. You know, you're very close. You know, to finally actually see that in the second half, and Andrew even said after the game, "Hey, you guys can even be better." Yeah. But uh, you know, how do you, how, you know, how nice was that to finally see that, and how, how do you build off of it going forward? No doubt. I mean, there was definitely those, you know, that second half, us operating, us playing together. Um, we're watching like that's us. That's who we are. That's the standard here at Boise State. That's what it needs to be, to where you feel like you're really dictating the game defensively, not letting it be dictated to you. Um, and that's who that's who we are capable of being. But like I told our defense um, yesterday, you can't take points off the board defensively, right? You can't you can't have a bad half and win consistently. You just can't, right? You can't. Hey, we had a bad half. We scored 50 points. Everyone's going to be like, great offensive performance. You just can't do that defensively, which is perfect. And so we just have to start. We started well in the first series, but then the second series, we gave some plays, missed some tackles, lost third down. 
Um, and it's just, and that, and we we got to be better. We got to execute in the critical moments. But I think for our guys, they're able to see now it works, right? It works. If I practice a certain way, if I prep a certain way, I've, I've, I've we failed enough in certain situations where now. We've cut our teeth. Guys that are young, guys that maybe haven't played as much, have played a lot now. Now it's time to learn from those and build on to where you're continually growing because it's not like it's going to get any easier, which is the beautiful part about this conference. You go on the road to Colorado State. we got Wyoming. Like it's, it's going to continually be you know, a big-time matchup every single week, and so we can't have any lulls. And when we do, we got to fix them quickly and not let it get to where we're down what we were. Obviously, you guys had some mix-ups with personnel there, too, yep. in the second half. Who, who was the guy or the guys that, that you really pushed the most uh, in that second half to, to help you? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, going through the game, you know, at some point, obviously, you know, Demetri Washington goes down the game, Marco. Like, there's, you go through it, there's some guys that, um, you know, Ty Benefield got banged up there. So there's just, there's a, there's a, there was a group of guys that, as we're going, it's like on the headset. And, and it, like I said, hats off to our training staff, our guys on the sideline, because it was, as we're mixing and matching our personnel, we had to make changes on the fly, in between series, on the fly, because we had to put guys in certain situations that maybe they didn't practice just because of some guys getting banged up in game. And thank the Lord we were able to get a couple of them back at the end of the game. But we were able to put, you know, Jaden Verge and Andrew Simpson, we had to put in some, some situations that we hadn't practiced just because of some guys getting banged up. And once again, guys on the sideline, got them on the board. This is what the calls are going to be. This is exactly what you're going to be ready for. And went out there and executed it. And so it was just, it was huge for our guys to be able to do that, put in different spots, giving them different calls that we were um, using in different situations and being able to execute it at a high level in the second half was big. So giving up big plays has been an issue for you guys this year, specifically passing plays of 15 yards or more. You guys have already yep. given up more than you gave up last season. Yep. As a coaching staff, how do you fix that? Yep. First off, communication and eye control, um, especially early on the season. The majority of all those are a lack of us being on the same page, A, or B, a lack of eye control in regards to seeing my keys and what my keys telling me. Um, and then at some point, too, it's, it's you got to win your one-on-one, -on -one, which we play tight coverage. That's what we do. That's what we believe in defensively here. Uh, and so at some point, it's going to be a 50-50 ball with a corner, a safety, a linebacker, wherever it is. And now we're working our tail off to make sure we can make those plays. But the big plays all come down to to eliminate explosive plays, run or pass. It's communication, eye control. Are we all on the same page? Are we all looking what we need? Are our keys where our eyes where our keys are supposed to be? Are we doing this the right way? And then at some point, too, the relentless pursuit to get the ball down as well. Down the pass rush as well, right? How do you, how do you guys improve? It's those all pass rush working numbers? together, right? It's and once again, even when we talked about some of these explosive plays we've given up in weeks past, it's not just the one guy that everybody sees that maybe gave up the play. Um, if there's no pressure in the quarterback's face and it's seven on seven for him, that's not how you want to play defensively, right? So it goes hand in hand. It's not one player at the end of the day. Like I said, I take full accountability for for what happens, but it's it's the front and the back end working together when when these explosive plays happen. And when they don't, same thing. It's the front end and the back end working together. We did a better job this week being able to change up some looks, create some pressure some pressure on the quarterback to where now he's no longer able to read coverages and look down the field. His eyes go down to the rush, which then you're working together as a team. Years ago, you guys had to, you know, the cheetah package that you put out mm -hmm. there. I don't know if I want to liken that just yet, but when you do put like Jaden and Andrew in those positions, how much more athletic and the, the agility that Andrew brings to the table too? Like, yeah. how, how much? What, what do they bring in those regards? When you put them yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you, as an offense wants to put more speed on the field, we're always trying to match that to make sure our our eleven on the field are the best that that are the best in that situation. Right, so um, Jaden Virgin, Andrew Simpson, you know Gabe Hunter, some of these guys that trying to make sure we get more speed on the field to match what we're seeing. Now, obviously, all these guys also play other positions too, so we have to streamline it defensively to make sure we're not putting too much on their plate. So then these guys are playing slow, and that's what I'm so proud of the guys that we did this with in the game. Is there wasn't really practice reps in some of these situations, um, so we had to do a good job of listening, and learning on the sideline, and then being able to execute it at a high level in the game. And they did that. So we're always trying, especially with with a group we have. Um, Younger crew are our best 11 on the field consistently. Obviously, depth comes into it, too. At some positions, we're not truly too deep. We're one and a half. This guy's going to have to swing to here. This guy's, That's just the way it is. It's week seven of the season. And with a group that's continually growing, that's the way it is. And so we're continually trying to work to build that depth. But it's all about who are our best 11. Regardless who we are playing, 
who are best 11 to play and defend what we are seeing and be on the attack. That's what we're, we're looking at right now. We're going to be looking at consistently throughout the week to make sure in every down and distance and every situation are our best 11 out there. Horton, uh, you know, obviously, the oh, yeah. brother you were here uh, when Tyler played here. Yep. Stopping him the year yep. he's having, obviously, he's going to present some issues. No question. I mean, hats off to him. Obviously, love his family. You know, T. Horton is here. He's a phenomenal young man. Um, and seeing the year he's having is awesome for him. He's a great young man. I mean, just the production he's having, the productions he's had consistently, regardless who they play, Colorado, Washington State. Um, you talk about a young man that can really do it all receiver-wise. He's not one of those guys that they just put him one place and he's just a deep threat, which in and of itself he can do. He'll be in the middle. He could catch slant routes across. They'll give him screen plays. He's an elite returner in special teams as well. Had a touchdown last week, punt return, I believe. So, I mean, you talk about a guy that we have to be very aware of where 14 is at all time because not only is he a great route runner, he can be in the slot, make, make linebacker safeties miss. He could also just go, go get it on a deep ball too. So we're going to be very aware where 14 is at consistently. Uh, for the young guys and the new guys in the defensive backfield, guys like Ty, guys like Zion, guys like Amarian, yep. just how, how much growth can you get out of, you know, that – that, that game last week and, yep. you know, just what's, what's kind of the future look like for them? No doubt. I mean, we, we got to grow quickly. And that's the reality of the sport we play. Um, we, are, we are guaranteed 12 games a year. We've played six. And so the guys on Amarion, a Ty Benefield, Zion Washington, a lot of these guys now at this point have gotten some really good game reps under them. Prior to this season, a lot of them had none. Some of them, they hadn't even been here yet, right? So it's at this point now, there's a lot of growth. There's a lot of failure that we've learned from. And so our best football needs to be in front of us. That's, our, that's the way every, I know. And every college football coach is saying that right now. But that's how we practice, how we prep. It has to be that way. Um, because especially in the game, you know, you look at it defensively. Um, when Demetri went down, DJ wasn't playing. You know, we're playing with almost all underclassmen, guys that are coming back. and so. But, but at this point, They've all played, right? They've all gotten game reps. Now, some more than others, but now the, the standard needs to be held, it needs to be set, and we have to have a really great week of practice. Um, and we got to learn from mistakes we've made in, in, in the past. Now, I really do believe that our guys can see that how we practice, that prep and how you get to play a game, it works. And now it's let's do it consistently and, and not, not dig ourselves a hole in the first half. Doesn't look really comfortable in the first half. Mm -hmm. In the second half, you spend the majority of the time you know, seemingly ready for his life. What's it like just to go back and, and watch that? I mean, you can tell the time sticking in his head, yep. get out the pocket, eyes up, eyes down, you know, find a receipt. Like, what's, what's it like just to go back and, and see the pressure and how you guys, probably the most uncomfortable half you've had out of an opposing quarterback Perfect. this year. Yeah, so, and once again, and especially, Jay, to your question earlier, even some different guys in situations creating pressure. And so, I mean, that is, to our question earlier, is, is that's how the front and the back end work together. The second that he can't sit back there and pat the ball like he's in practice and he's trying to figure out what's coming, what coverage is in, and his eyes go down to the rush, now we're working as a defense. We're working together, and we're not just creating a very clear picture for him. And so it's a lot of video evidence, and even the guys that were on the field getting those reps, once again, proving that this is, this is what it takes to play good defense. It's not just... One guy, it's not one guy not doing good or one guy doing well. It's all when, when it's successful, it's everybody working together, and that's defense. That's when you're elite, that's the standard here. And so, I just I, I'm very excited for the fact that now we've learned those mistakes and we've also seen it done well and the prep it takes to be able to play well because um, we have the guys, it's and we talk about being a young kid, we, we have enough, we have a great group. We've played enough football now. We've learned our lessons. Not saying we're going to be perfect by any means going forward, but I'm excited that there's a lot of game reps now for a younger crew that we can pull from. Horton, what else stands out to you about uh, Colorado State's offense? Yeah, it's been cool. It's been cool to see them even since last year. Um, you know, Grohl McGarcy. You know, they do a great job running the football too. I, mean, I think they're fourth ranked nationally passing game wise, but. You see them, I and they, they will still establish a run game on first and second down. And, and that's – you don't see that a lot with teams that throw it as well as they do. If a, if a team's ranked top five in a category, usually it's very swayed 
one way or the other in regards to run pass. But if you look at first and second down, I mean, they're pretty mixed in regards to still run the football. So uh, I think their tailback's really good. Their O-line works together. They create some, some stress because your defenses are worried about Horton, worried about the passing attack and what they're getting. And their tailbacks, their O-line does a great job with the run schemes. I think their tight end's one of the best tight ends we've seen. Um, I mean, he never comes off the field, can, can catch all the balls. Um, really good run blocker as well. I mean, I think he plays almost every snap of the entire game. Um, and then you've got some, a, a receiving core around um, T. Hort that can also create matchup issues. We saw last year, um, n once you take away one threat, they still got a lot around him that, that can create matchup issues. And I think the, the young quarterback, number 16, I mean, nimble, nimble foot, he can make every throw. He can throw the ball a mile. Um, now, it's, now it's our job to make sure we do a good job, obviously taking away what they want to do. And, and more than anything, guys, playing sound, playing together. That's the thing defensively, man. It's not, don't do your own thing. We're going to play sound, play together and be on the same page. And when that ball snapped, everybody does their job. You're able to stack series together playing well. Marco Nitriani stepped in and played really well this year. What do you remember about his recruitment? Yeah, it's, so obviously going through, Marco was recruited during COVID, right? So wasn't, a, wasn't ever able to come on campus, wasn't, able, wasn't ever able to come on an OV. And so it was all more Zooms and phone calls. And, and one of the first times he came on campus was obviously when he, when he checked in here. Um, and you talk about a guy from high school that, that did it all, you know, word, we, we joke with him now, word number 28 in high school. And, um, but just a young man that very similar to DJ, I compare him similar in regards to their mental makeup, that he's a competitor in everything he does. Where if he's in the classroom, he's a 4.0 student. Um, he goes up in the film room, whatever, whatever time he's in there, he's going to probably be in here in about 30 minutes. I mean, he's prepping the same way as if it's, you know, 10 minutes before a game. Like, that's just, that's just how his mind works. Last year, he tore his ACL against New Mexico. And he's one of the few guys I've ever seen that he is done for the season. It's not like he might come back, right? He tore his ACL. He was done for the season. And he still prepped and took the same type of notes as if he was starting that weekend, right? That's just who he is. And that now carries over to where now him being the starter, him being the guy there, that process is just who he is, right? So he's not like all of a sudden he's got to put a Superman cape on and be someone different. He's worked that those habits for a long time, and now it's showing up for him in a major way. So uh, just extremely – from recruitment to who he is now, he's always been just a competitor. Fun, gr great guy to be around. He walks in right now, he probably says some kind of joke for us a lot, but he's that guy that can just – lock in, prep, and he puts a lot on himself. I'm more the guy that, hey, Marco, we're going to be fine here because he, he cares deeply. He's an elite competitor in everything he does, right? And so excited for him to keep growing. He stepped up a lot with DJ's absence in regards to leadership on the field and being able to make sure, especially in the front, that we're all on the same page. And he stepped up. We need him to. As you know, for linebackers, that first step is critical. To my untrained eye, it seems like Marco never takes the wrong first step. So where are his instincts right now? Yeah, he's an extinctual football player. No question. He, he does a great job. We talk about winning in the gray because offenses right now can, can go watch Patrick Mahomes on Sunday, and we might see their three touchdowns in the game. Right? You just don't know how, how an offense is going to attack. Obviously, everyone has their DNA plays, but Marco does a great job with his read and react skills, being able to read primary keys, understand formations in regards to what he's getting pre-snap, and then lock into his keys so that he can maximize his athletic ability and g make a lot of plays because he's in the right situation based off strictly off his keys. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it, guys.